Welcome! And today we are taking a little break from the usual drama by checking out some posts from some budding comedians on Reddit. Hi, this is Derek, I just put the drama llama Fred back in his pen so that I can do this quick video for you with some of the stuff that Fred found on Reddit earlier today. Fred says these posts will help us to wash away all that other drama, so that we don't take ourselves too seriously. Oh boy, let's get ready for some jokes. Madaza Hatter took the mic with. A man playing on a new golf course got confused as to what hole he was on. He saw a lady playing ahead of him, so he walked up to her and asked if she knew what hole he was playing. She replied, I'm on the seventh hole and you're a hole behind me, so you must be on the sixth hole. He thanked her and went back to his golf. On the back nine, the same thing happened and he approached the lady, again with the same request. She said, I'm on the 14th, you are a hole behind me, so you must be on the 13th. Once again, he thanked her. He finished his round, went into the clubhouse and saw the lady sitting at the end of the bar. He went up to her and said, let me buy you a drink to show my appreciation for your help. He started a conversation and asked her what kind of work she did. She said she was in sales and he said he was in sales also. He asked what she sold. She replied, if I told you, you would only laugh. No, I wouldn't. He said. She said, I sell tampons. With that he fell on the floor laughing so hard. She said, see, I knew you would laugh. That's not what I'm laughing at. He replied. I'm a toilet paper salesman, so I'm still one hole behind you. Poor Choi Gupto went up to the stage with. My wife beamed at me with pride and said. Wow. I never thought our son would go that far. I said, this trebuchet is amazing. Go get our daughter. Okay, okay, okay. For those of you who don't know what a trebuchet is, it's a huge sling, the type they used to throw boulders in the old days of castles and dragons. Get it? Oh boy, tough crowd. The supercell boss went on stage and delivered. The genie said, I shall grant you three wishes. I then said, I wish for a world without lawyers. Genie. Done. You have no more wishes. But, you said three. The genie then replies. Sue me. M. Bones too then took the mic. A woman was at her hairdresser's getting her hair styled for a trip to Rome with her husband. She mentioned the trip to the hairdresser, who responded. Rome? Why would anyone want to go there? It's crowded and dirty. You're crazy to go to Rome. So, how are you getting there? We're taking United was the reply. We got a great rate. United? Exclaimed the hairdresser. That's a terrible airline. Their planes are old, their flight attendants are ugly, and they're always late. So, where are you staying in Rome? We'll be at this exclusive little place over on Rome's Tiber River called Taste. Don't go any further. I know that place. Everybody thinks it's gonna be something special and exclusive, but it's really a dump. We're going to go to see the Vatican and maybe get to see the Pope. That's rich, laughed the hairdresser. You and a million other people trying to see him. He'll look like the size of an ant. Boy, good luck on this lousy trip of yours. You're going to need it. A month later, the woman again came in for a hairdo. The hairdresser asked her about her trip to Rome. It was wonderful, explained the woman. Not only were we on time in one of United's brand new planes, but it was overbooked, and they bumped us up to first class. The food and wine were wonderful, and we had a handsome 28-year-old steward who waited on us hand and foot. And the Taste Hotel was great. They just finished a $5 million remodeling, and now it's a jewel, the finest hotel in the city. They, too, were overbooked, so they apologized and gave us their owner's suite at no extra charge. Well, muttered the hairdresser, that's all well and good, 
but I know you didn't get to see the Pope. Actually, we were quite lucky, because as we toured the Vatican, a Swiss guard tapped me on the shoulder, and explained that the Pope likes to meet some of the visitors, and if I'd be so kind as to step into his private room and wait, the Pope would personally greet us. Sure enough, five minutes later, the Pope walked through the door and shook my hand. I knelt down and he spoke a few words to me. Oh, really? What did he say? He said, Who, screwed up your hair? Cyclo propagative then went up. A husband and a wife over their marriage had eight kids. One day the husband notices that their sixth kid, Billy, looks very different from the other seven. The husband goes to his wife and asks her. Honey, I noticed that Billy looks different from the other children, did you have an affair? The wife starts to break down into tears and nods her head. The husband, heartbroken, quietly asks his wife, so who is Billy's father? You. Release safeties then got a chance. A blonde and a lawyer are on a plane and they're sitting next to each other. The lawyer gets bored and decides to play a game. He asks the blonde to join. The lawyer says we'll each ask each other a trivia question. If you get it right, you earn $5. If you get it wrong, the other person earns $5. Well, the blonde isn't really interested. She turns away as if to take a nap. The lawyer says okay, 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 how about this? If I ask you a question and you get it wrong, you give me $5. But if you ask a question and I get it wrong, I'll give you $100,000. Obviously now the blonde is interested, so she decides to play. The lawyer asks his question first. What's the distance between the earth and the moon? Well, the blonde doesn't know. So she hands the lawyer $5. Now it's the blonde's turn. She asks the lawyer what goes up a hill with three legs and comes down with four. The lawyer is stumped. What could possibly go up a hill with three legs and come down with four? He begins to sweat. He starts asking other passengers. He pays for the in-flight internet to email his lawyer friends. Nobody knows. Nobody can help him. Reluctantly, he writes a $100,000 check to the blonde. She smirks, takes his check, pockets it, and turns over, again wishing to get back to her nap. The lawyer shakes her. Hey, wait, he said. What goes up a hill with three legs and comes down with four? The blonde hands him $5. Matsky 1984 took the mic with. A man walks up to the widow at a funeral and asks if he can say a word. Of course she replies. The man plucks up the courage and says. Bargain. The widow looks at him, teary-eyed and says. Thank you so much. That means a great deal. 31 more years then went up on stage. Smoking will kill you. Bacon will kill you. Smoking bacon will cure it. Titty broke boy then grabbed the mic and said. To the man in the wheelchair that stole my camo jacket. You can hide. But you can't run. Pull one Sonata then got a chance. David Hasselhoff walks into a bar. It's a pleasure to serve you, Mr. Hasselhoff, said the bartender. Just call me Hoff, if it's not too much trouble, he replied. Sure, said the bartender, no hassle. And finally trust me I'm a consultant got a chance with the mic. A mathematician arrives at work on a bike. His colleague asks. Where did you get the bike? That's really curious. Imagine, I was walking down the road. Suddenly a young woman comes along on this bike, jumps off, takes her dress off till she's naked and says. Take what you want. So I took the bike. Ha! Huh. Makes sense, his colleague says. I don't think you'd look good in a dress. Well, there you have it. A perfectly great set of jokes posted by a bunch of 
fine and funny citizens. Help support this channel by smashing the like and subscribe buttons. And hit that silly little bell as well to ensure you get the latest videos. Fred is always finding stuff for me to post regularly. So this is Derek signing off, thanks for watching. Good grief, it sounds like Fred is out of his pen again. He must have found more funny jokes for me to share with you. See you soon. <laughs>